Hello everybody, this is David. In this video I'll talk about UART design in Verilog and demonstrate a complete UART core on the Basis 3 FPGA using my laptop and PuTTY, a serial console emulator. In UART communication there are two UART cores that communicate with each other through their RX and TX lines. There is no clock signal involved in, with UART communication like there is with SPI and I2C. The two UARTs must agree on a baud rate, or bits per second, in order to communicate. More on the baud rate later. Each of the TX lines are held, lot, are held high when no transmission is happening. This is called idle. A transmission is initiated by one of the UARTs bringing its TX line low, which indicates a start condition. The timing diagram shows the UART protocol used for this project. It contains a start bit, eight data bits, and a stop bit. There are different ways to set up a UART protocol by including a parity bit for error detection and utilizing different size stop bits. This is the complete UART core used for this project. It consists of a UART receiver, a UART transmitter, a baud rate generator, one FIFO for the receiver, and one FIFO for the transmitter. The interface circuit will be discussed in more detail later. <coughs> This is the section of the BASIS-3 reference manual that talks about the connection for using UART. The USB cable used to program the BASIS-3 is the same cable where UART communication takes place. It talks about an FTDI chip that is used for UART and JTAG and how the two communications do not interfere with each other. It also mentions two onboard LEDs for indicating UART transmission, labeled RX and TX, located next to the USB connection on the basis 3, and how these LEDs indicate the direction of data from the point of view of the system communicating with the FPGA, in this case, a PC. Without knowing this information, the LEDs would seem backwards as you are looking at them from the point of view of the FPGA. This will be demonstrated later during the circuit test. This is the FPGA circuitry and equipment used for this project. The project is set up for a laptop PC to communicate with the BASIS-3 FPGA. The FPGA circuit contains a UART core and interface circuitry consisting of a button, eight LEDs, two segments of one seven-segment display, and circuitry to add one to the data sent from the PC. Data sent from the PC will be in the form of ASCII values. The laptop will utilize the serial console emulator called PuTTY, which can be downloaded for free. More on PuTTY later. Demonstrating the project will involve typing a character key on the PC keyboard, receiving the key's ASCII code in the FPGA circuitry, and reading the ASCII plus one value back to the serial console on the PC by pressing the button. The, the eight LEDs show the current ASCII value pointed to by the read pointer in the UART receiver FIFO. The two segments on the seven segment display will indicate when the receiver's FIFO is full or empty. <coughs> A UART transmitter is a parallel in serial out shift register that receives a data word such as a byte in parallel and shifts each bit out serially to a UART receiver at an agreed upon baud rate. The baud rate used in this project is the common baud rate of 9600. More on the baud rate later. This project utilizes a state machine for the UART transmitter. A UART receiver is a serial in parallel out shift register that receives data one bit at a time and re reassembles the data into the data word before shifting it out. This project utilizes a state machine for the UART receiver. This project uses an oversampling technique in the UART receiver to read the serial data bits as they come in. A sampling tick of 16 times the baud rate will be used in the circuitry. More on the baud rate on the next slide. As mentioned before, the TX line of a UART transmitter is held high during periods of no data transmissions and brought low to initiate a data transmission. The timing diagram shows the use of a counter for determining and estimating of the center of a data bit after a start a condition occurs. After the RX line of the receiver goes low, indicating the start of data transmission, the 4-bit counter will count to 7 and then reset to 0, essentially at the center point of the start bit period. The counter will then continue to count to 15 to estimate the center for each data bit that follows the start bit. 
Once all 8 bits of data are received, the stop bit is asserted as a high value and the line is left high by the transmitter to return the line to an idle state. The baud rate generator generates the sample tick that the counters of the receiver and transmitter use to transition through their states. The sample tick is calculated using this formula. The agreed, the agreed upon baud rate of 9600 is multiplied by 16 to get 153,600. The basis 3 clock of 100 megahertz is then divided by 153,600 to obtain the limit of the counter, in this case 651, at which time the sample tick is asserted. The sample tick occurs 16 times during a data bit period. After programming the FPGA, we'll run PuTTY and observe, and observe the window on the right. To set up PuTTY for use with this project, first click on the radio button next to um, Serial in the PuTTY user interface, open your device manager, and check to see which COM port your FPGA is connected to. Enter the COM port number in the text box under Serial Line. Next, enter the baud rate in the text box under Speed and click on the Open button. This will open PuTTY's serial console for reading data sent from the FPGA. You can download PuTTY for free at this web address. Now we will take a look at the Verilog code used in this project. The version of Vivado used in this project is 2021.2. On the left under Sources, you can see the project's uh, module hierarchy. The button to bouncer is the same one I've used before, so I'm not going to cover the code for it in this video. Also, the code for the FIFA was covered in my previous video and is the exact same FIFA module used for this project with no changes to it. The FIFA baud rate generator, receiver, and transmitter are all parameterized to accommodate different size FIFOs, different baud rates, different data word sizes, and different stop bit lengths. The parameters of the UART receiver are set up for 8 data bits and 1 stop bit, which is 16 sample ticks in length. For 1.5 stop bits, this value would be set to 24, and for 2 stop bits, set to 32. The I.O. interface of the receiver mirrors that of the block diagram. The receiver's state machine has 4 states, idle, start, data, and stop. Registers are used for the state register, counting of sample ticks, counting of data bits received, and for storing the reassembled data word that will be sent to the receiver's FIFO unit. Register logic controls the value of the registers based on the FPGA clock signal and reset button. State machine logic controls the state transitions during uh, data receipt. The state machine begins in the idle state and transitions to the start date or start state upon uh, the RX input going low, right here, not RX. Um, after the counter reaches seven, the state machine transitions to the next state of the data state. Uh, the data state is where the serial data is received into the receiver's data register. Each time the counter reaches 15, the incoming data is shifted into the register for as many data bits as specified in the dbits parameter. Once that limit is reached and all the data bits have been received, the state machine transitions to the stop state and remains there for the duration of the number of stop bit ticks specified by the SB tick parameter. Once this limit is reached, the state machine transitions back to the idle state to wait for another start condition. The parameters of the transmitter should be the same as the receiver. The I.O. interface of the transmitter mirrors the block diagram. The states of the transmitter are also named the same as the receiver, but function a little differently. In the idle state, the TX line is held high. Right here. Upon receiving the TX start signal, which is the inverse of the transmitter's FIFO empty line, meaning there is data to be transmitted residing in the FIFO, the data word is latched into the transmitter's data register and the state transitions to the start state. 
Here the TX line is brought low to indicate the start of a data transmission. After one bit period for the start condition, in this case 16 sample ticks from the baud rate generator, the state transitions to data, where every bit period a new data bit to transmit is shifted into the data register's first bit facing the TX line for the number of data bits specified by the D bits parameter. After the last data bit has been transmitted, the state transitions to the stop state for the duration of sample ticks specified by the SB tick parameter, and then back to the idle state awaiting another word to transmit. As mentioned in the slides, this baud rate generator is set up for the common baud rate of 9600 and the parameters of N and M are derived from the formula also seen in the slides. Essentially, we have a counter of bit width specified by the N parameter that counts from zero to the limit specified by the M parameter. The output signal tick is asserted every time the counter reaches the limit value. The top module instantiates all the modules needed for a complete UART core and comprises all the wires needed to connect all the modules. The top module is the UART core and is also parameter parameterized to accommodate the parameterization used in the instantiated modules. The module is currently set up for 8 data bits, 16 stop bit ticks, 9600 baud rate, and a FIFO memory depth of 4 data words. This module was tested using different baud rates and worked exactly the same for each one. Baud rates used with this module include 9600, 19200, 115200, which are common baud rates, and also a random baud rate of 1500. Calculations for deriving the different parameter values for each baud rate are included in the comments section of, at the top of the file. To use a different baud rate, Simply plug in the formulated values for M and N for the BR limit and BR bits parameters of this module. The UART test module is used to connect the UART core with the FPGA interface circuit described in the slides. The UART constraints file or XDC file is used to connect the signals of the UART test module on the FPGA to physical connections on the BASIS-3 board. The USB RS-232 interface signals from the BASIS-3 master XDC are used for the UART RX and TX signals. Now it is time to demonstrate the project. Okay, after programming the FPGA, you open up your PuTTY on your PC and notice the bottom segment of the 7th segment display is lit indicating the receiver's FIFO is empty. Now, I can't show you this working. I'm going to show you it from the PuTTY side. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to type keys on the keyboard of my laptop and if you do this project, you'll notice that when you type in a key, this FIFO empty will no longer be lit and after you type 4, the FIFO full will be lit. Also, you'll see the RX and TX buttons up here by the USB connection will light up when you press the keys or the button for whichever way the uh, communication is going. And you'll also see these eight LEDs down here light up with the ASCII code that is being pointed to by the read pointer. So I'm going to show you the putty side of it. So now I'm going to type in um, the letters A, B, C, D on the keyboard, then press the button three times leaving, or actually I'm gonna press um, A, B, C, D. So A, B, C, D. The FIFO full signal is now lit. I've got some lights on the LED indicating um, data in the FIFO. And now when I press the button to transmit that data back, you should see the ASCII plus one. So if I put in A, B, C, D, we'll see B, C, D, E here. I'm going to do the same thing to fill up the FIFO, A, B, C, D. I'm going to press the button three times, B, C, D is what we get back. And now I have three FIFO open locations. I'm going to press three more keys, X, Y, and Z. And now the FIFO is full again. I'm going to press the button four times, one, two, three, four, and we get the ASCII plus one. And you'll notice the left curly brace here 
if you check an ASCII chart, that is the actual value of the next ASCII code after the lowercase c. Um, this completes the project demonstration. As always, I will post all the necessary project files to my GitHub repository that can be accessed from the link in the description. If you have any questions regarding this project, please leave a comment and I will respond as soon as I can. If you like this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to this channel for more videos on FPGA projects using Verilog. Thanks for watching.